as the two-time AFC South champion. Get it done again. When your body moving like you never gon' stop Gotta get the pop and like you never gon' stop Drop it down and shake it like you never gon' stop Coming up on this week's Titans All Access. Hey, your Titans are AFC South champs yet again, but the men in two-tone blue aren't quite done. Find out what they'll need to do in order to lock up the AFC's number one seed. Sunday's win had a little bit of everything, and Coach Mack breaks it all down in this week's Beneath the Surface. Plus, Nick Westbrook Aquina is one of an NFL record number of players the Titans have used this season and is getting used to fans knowing who he is. It's time to celebrate a little bit. Take a little victory lap. It's an AFC South champion edition of Titans All Access that starts right now. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! The John Evans, A.J. Brown. To the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. This is Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. I'm Mike Keith, and you're at the home of the two-time defending AFC South champion Tennessee Titans. And we are so excited as we're going to talk ball with general manager John Robinson. John, first of all, congratulations on your second straight division crown. For the whole organization, what does it mean? Yeah, Mike, it's, you know, it's just so special. There's so many different, you know, parts of the organization. Everybody certainly sees the, you know, the players and the coaches, but there's so many people that are, that are involved uh, with the football team and the organization. We're all blessed to work for Miss Amy, um, but there's a lot of hard work put in by a lot of different departments, you know, a lot of long hours and to see, you know, the football team go out and, and, and execute and play the way we played to, you know, come up with wins, you know, here and there and stack enough together uh, to, to, to win the division again. Just a really special, uh, special moment for us. Multiple themes from Sunday's 34 to three win over Miami. Start with number one, team defense. Yeah, I think that, you know, that was, you know, that was one of the keys going in was, you know, play, you know, get the call, get lined up, adjust to what they're going to do. You know, they did a lot, they had a lot of different wrinkles um, in Miami. Uh, it was good. You know, I thought that there were different players that stepped up throughout the course of the game, whether it was, you know, Danico and Jeffrey pressuring from the inside, Harold and Bud coming off the edge, uh, Cunningham, Evans making some huge tackles. KB made a couple, you know, they popped a couple of runs on us and KB stepped up and got them on the ground. A couple of key PBUs from Fulton and Rabbit and, you know, big interception by Long there at the end. But overall team defense was really on point Sunday. Okay, so that's one theme. How about another one? Offensive efficiency. Yeah, that's, you know, that was that was huge for us to get kind of get in a rhythm. We started a little slow, you know, had a couple of three and outs to start there, but we kind of found a rhythm, started to run the football. I thought the line did a good job. Uh, of getting on their guy, staying on their guy. I thought the receivers and the tight ends, you know, all blocked well. You know, running backs, they found creases. They got downhill. They pressed the hole. We were able to push the pile some. And then we had to throw the ball, set up the play action. You know, Ryan did a great job putting the ball in good spots. Uh, line had a good firm pocket. Tight ends had a couple big touchdown catches for us. But it was really efficient, you know, after that first couple of drives. Uh, we got into it. We got into that rhythm. John, what do you have to do better against the Texans this Sunday than you did when you played them back on November 21st? Yeah, I think that's a pretty simple one, Mike. Take care of the football. You know, I think that, you know, we did we did a lot of good things in that game. Unfortunately, we turned the football over. You know, we've got to do an outstanding job of taking care of the football, securing it offensively and defensively. We keep preaching, you know, and we had four fumbles in the Miami game, came up with one, continue to try to get the ball away from you know, from our opponent, try to steal a possession to get it back to our offense. John, congratulations on the win against Miami. Good luck this weekend in Houston. Thanks, Mike. Tighten up. All right, tighten up indeed. When we come back, Amy Wells was down on the sideline during all of the sleet and the rain and everything in the win over Miami. She'll tell us about that, and we'll have more about what the day was like when Titans All Access continues. Welcome you to the Bet MGM studio, and as promised, 
Amy Wells is here. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. It's good to be here. Okay, so you see we're in the Bet MGM studio, but I can do something magic that also applies. How about this? Nice. For you, AFC South champions. It looks so much better. That is what should always be up there. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's tremendous. Sunday's win over Miami 34 to 3 featured a lot of different elements, including the weather and an incredible atmosphere. Oh my gosh, Titans fans showed up in a huge way. It was freezing cold, it was pouring down rain. They didn't care. It was so much fun to watch this fan base get that win and really be involved in the game. It was awesome. Excellent atmosphere overall, and it leads us straight into something special. The sounds of the game in the win over the Miami Dolphins. The year 2022 couldn't get here quick enough in a world where the Titans are just one win away from clinching a second straight AFC South division title. Miami has won seven in a row, and if that streak can reach nine, they make the playoffs. Tennessee, on the other hand, captures the AFC South with a win today. This is a big game. Hey, listen, man. We got another opportunity, baby, to take over again, man. Two years in a row, division title coming up, baby. Let's get it. Miami being a visiting team, you make the call. What's your call? Head to the call. Tells him win the toss. Titans win the toss, elect to defer, and they are taking the strong north wind at their backs. The whistle has blown. Let's play football. Kick comes downfield. Lindsey from the one to the five, to the 10, to the 15. He's hit and taken down at the 17 yard line on an outstanding tackle by Chris Jackson. High formation for Tennessee. Play fake, he throws, man is wide open. Touchdown, Titans, Jeffrey Swaim. That way Swaim ball. He's on out. Bullock's kick is up and it is good. 7-0 Titans, 124 remaining first quarter. Play pick, Tucker by Loa loses the ball. It's rolling free. The Titans are trying to get on it. It's Titan ball! And the Titans go get it with Elijah Molden. Hey, 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 hey. Big hey, time stop, baby. Nice job. Great play. Nice job. 23 yard field goal. Bullock's kick is up, and his kick is good. Titans gonna run Foreman to the right, Foreman to the 15, Foreman to the 10, Foreman to the 5, yes! Foreman to the end zone! Touchdown, Titans, Deontay Foreman! All right, set, keep that head up, keep playing hard. Now oh. we're gonna need about two more of them. So. Two more. It's third down and long. Tua, hit, sack! Harold Landry with an even dozen. Hey, Second down and 11. Play fake, Tannehill rolling to the right, throwing downfield. Touchdown, Titans! Anthony Ferkser for the first time this year. Let's go! I turned my head. I saw him rolling free. I'm like, nice and easy. Snap, set. Bullock's kick is on the way. Good! With 2.58 remaining, Titans 27, Dolphins 3. They run the same play over and over again. We got to make them pay for it. Tugabai low, fires down the middle, up in the air, and the ball is intercepted by the Titans. Intercepted on a deflection by Long, and he is ruled down at that point where he made the interception. <laughs> Third down and 11, two minutes to go in the game. Titans at the Miami 39-yard line. Woodside heads to Hilliard, he's got room. 30, 20, 10, <laughs> five, in, zone. Oh, John Trell, touchdown, Titans. Okay, exclamation point on the day. Hats and t-shirts. Hey, hey. Show him the hat. Show him oh, the hat. He can't do it. It's a secret. <laughs> Good day for the Tennessee Titans. Your final score, 
Tennessee 34, Miami 3, as the two-time defending AFC South champions get it done again. Y'all know what time it is, man. Listen to AFC, Fight, man. man. AFC champions. Hey, man, listen. We try to tell y'all. We got a big opportunity, man. We're going to change some things around here, baby. Just know that it's coming. The boys are AFC South champs two times in a row, back to back. We got more to do. Man, that was an awesome atmosphere. Oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional just watching that and reliving it. Back to back AFC South titles for the Titans. And if you're Nick Westbrook Akina, you've never known any different. Two years in the league, two division crowns. When Titans All Access returns, NWI sits down to be this week's Nissan Insider. Stay with us. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio here at Nissan Stadium. The Tennessee Titans have used a record number of players in the 2021 season. That's right, 89 to be exact. And one of the guys that the team has relied most heavily on is Nick Westbrook Akina. So, of course, we had to make him today's Nissan Insider. Here's Mike Keith with the man that we like to call NWI. Give me a minute to get up in it. How does it feel to know that we winning? We ain't taking no prisoners. Either you with or against us. We ain't falling for no okie doke. When it go bang, you gon' know. My team, we ain't no joke. So. As I've read about you, and I'm trying to figure out who your hero is, it seems like it comes down to one name, and that's Amy Nickel. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Tell us who Amy Nickel is. Amy Nickel is my mom. She had me when she was, you know, pretty young, and I feel like she did everything she could to get me to, you know, this position right here. You know, she worked her tail off, working two jobs, trying to go through college while having me. She just kind of kept everything under wraps to make my experience as a child as good as it can be, and I'm so thankful for her and love her so much for it. So, mom yeah. is the reason that Nick isn't afraid to cover a kick or catch an onside kick or block somebody or do anything that he's asked to do on the field because you saw your mom do this as you grew up. Yeah, exactly. She did whatever she could or whatever she had to do for me to be able to, you know, live a happy life. And so I feel like, you know, there's nothing that I can't do or no challenge that I can't overcome because she's done it before. There are high school players right now who want to be Nick Westbrook Aquino. Yeah. Does that freak you out? It is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> but they see you and they, you know, they want to emulate what you're doing, whether it's catching a pass or throwing a block for Derrick Henry or recovering the onside kick to put away the Saints or whatever it takes. Yeah, I guess that's kind of something different. You know, growing up, you always think about the big name players, you know, making the big one-handed catches, the game winning touchdowns. So I guess it's kind of cool that guys, you know, Younger players can think, oh, no, I want to be the guy that's doing the dirty work, you know, to help the team win. All right, I want to back up for just a second and ask you the, the one thing that some people don't know the answer to, and that is you're Nick Westbrook at Indiana. Mm -hmm. You're now Nick Westbrook Akita. Some people don't know why you've added the Akita. Would you mind explaining the story? Yeah, so uh, Akina is my biological dad's last name and that side of the family, their whole last name. And so I was able to reconnect with them, you know, being able to put that name on the jersey for them, I felt like would be a really cool, meaningful way to try to connect with them and, and have them, you know, see their name, you know, in a prime time position and in the spotlight uh, and show them that, you know, they can do big things too. Awesome. All right, let's talk special teams. If I'm walking into the special teams meeting, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what's expected of me. If I play on Titans special teams, yeah. what am I in for? What is expected? I mean, it's kind of like what we talked about before. It's, you know, you got to do whatever it takes, accept your role, you know, whatever it takes to, to help the team win and understanding the, the importance of special teams. Just have a, a alpha dog mentality. You know, that's something we always talk about is being the guy that's going to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup against, you know, their best special team player and, and turn the tide in the game in the special teams aspect and, you know, play complimentary football. Who is your special teams hero in the Titans special teams room? Right now, I mean, there's a bunch. I remember coming in last year, watching a bunch of film, you know, at Gunner and, and kickoff. Dane was making plays all over the place. 
But then, you know, another aspect is, you know, having Matthias, you know, a veteran who's been on, in the league for a while and made his, his mark on special teams. Same with uh, Nick Zubnar. You know, just having those guys and that experience on the field is really comforting for me. It gives me that confidence knowing that they're around me as well to allow me just to play free and make, try to make plays. Coming up after the break, Coach Mack reviews some of the top plays from the Titans' victory over the Miami Dolphins. You don't want to miss this, guys. Stick around. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Still reveling a little bit in the Titans' 34-3 win over the Miami Dolphins. But to really understand the, how the Titans were able to do it, you have to go deeper. Yes, and there's no better person to analyze the really the depth of that win than Coach Mack, Dave McGinnis. So let's go beneath the surface with Coach Mack while the rest of us revel more than a little bit. This is Coach Mack. We're going beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. All right, we're in the first quarter here, 11:44, third and 10. What you're going to see here, this is a zone coverage, and it's going to be a four-man rush, but this is a picture-perfect example of what we call a cage rush. The Titans are sweeten this four-man rush up a little bit because they're going to run a game inside. Nico Autry, left tackle, watch the right tackle collapse the pocket back. Nico Autry steps up into it, collapses, and then wraps around. And as he wraps around, because the cage rush is so perfectly set, the zone coverage on third and 10 has taken away all throwing possibilities. And then Danico Autry makes a big sack, huge play in this ball game. Now what you're going to look at, it's second and 10. Now watch the Titans bogey their front, line up in a four man front, shift down from the left to the right, and they've completely confused the quarterback. Watch what happens here as they do this. And then Molden is playing this corner at the slot up to the top of the left. This is a slot pressure. You can see him coming after the line is shifts. And as they start, Tua again, does not, not quite sure what he's seeing now because the front and the coverage has changed on him from pre-snap to post-snap. He goes to throw, and now we've got an icy, wet day at Nissan Stadium. Ball completely slips out of his hand. Watch everybody race to the football. Big scrum for the football, but Molden, the one that was coming off the pressure from the slot, ends up with the football. Big, big takeaway for the Titans in this instance. We're now moving on to the second quarter. Titans have been hammering away in a very stout Miami defensive front all day. This is a really great job by the offensive line. Watch the right side get complete knocked back on the left side of the Miami defense. And then watch the second level. Watch them climb to the second level. Take a look at what Foreman does in the backfield. As he starts, he takes a little dip to the left to set up the blocks at the second level and then hits the hole extremely hard. Watch the receiver throw a key block downfield. This is a 21 yard touchdown run, 17 to three now, Titans. We now move to the fourth quarter. Titans now have been running the football so well that now Miami is really, really trying to gear down to stop the run. This is a three layer bootleg action going to the offensive right. It's blocked very, very well. Watch the right side of the offensive line completely cave down. All the contain elements. Tannehill has now got great depth. He's got great vision. And look at the three layers of the receivers he has to throw to and to choose from. The motion man has come across, going behind the line of scrimmage. He's the first layer, second layer deep, third layer. Watch him throw the ball. Ferkser is wide open. Miami completely confused. But the Titans have all set this up by a great run game. And now the play action pass is working to perfection. Final play we're going to look at here is the fourth quarter. The Miami Dolphins are in a must throw situation. Tua drops back. First of all, zone coverage. The two outside receivers are covered. Watch your two inside elements here on defense. Take a great directional delivery key. This is textbook right here. And then a very athletic interception by David Long. Look at the race to the football by everybody. This is another takeaway for a big, big Titans win. Now on to bigger things with the Texans game next week. So the Titans are heading to Houston in week 18, and they've got something to play for. Do you know what that is, Mike? Yeah, the number one seed in the conference. And do you know what that gets the Tennessee Titans? Uh, two home games after a bye. Exactly. Mike Keith is going to have the keys to getting that bye when we come back. I'm on it. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It is time for the greatest part of the show, Mike Keith's Keys, presented by VisitMyrtleBeach.com. Mike Keith, where are you going if we get a bye week? I think we might go to Myrtle Beach. I think we the should. VisitMyrtleBeach.com doesn't know it, but 
You're going to put us all up. Everybody on the crew, we're all coming. We'll be there. With January in Myrtle Beach. Sounds great. Good stuff. All right. But what really sounds great is key number one, and that's taking care of the football. The reason the Titans lost to the Texans on November 21st was simply turnovers. As a matter of fact, the Titans this year and their 11 wins overall, plus 11 in turnover ratio in the five games they've lost, minus 14 in turnover ratio. When the Titans take care of the ball, they don't lose. When they don't, they do. Take care of the ball Sunday in Houston. All right, what's the second key? Pressure Davis Mills, rookie quarterback, didn't play in the first game against the Titans on November 21st, has 13 touchdown passes, has 10 interceptions, has also lost a fumble and been sacked 29 times. The Titans need to get the heat on the kid. I like that. All right, what's the third and final key? Win the running game. Rex Burkhead has been running the football well as of late for the Texans. Don't let it happen. On the other side for the Titans, Foreman, Hilliard, McNichols, and Tannehill have been running well. Keep it going. You've got to win the running game on Sunday to win the number one overall seed in the AFC. And a trip to Myrtle Beach. That'd, that'd be great <laughs> during the bye weekend. <laughs> the Titans and the Texans this Sunday kick off set for noon central time. Amy Wells, Rhett Bryan have Titans countdown on your favorite Titans radio station beginning at 11 a.m. Central. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us for this edition of Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.